hi guys, I got a new shirt. And I'm actually really excited about that, and I think I freaked out my roommate, who I think actually left as a result of my over-exuberance for a shirt. So yesterday I told you about how growing up, when I was in 8th grade, I went to the Shell building to work with special ed students. Continuing on the line of Brendan Kern's flashbacks to history, his personal history, um, I was born in Huntsville, Alabama, and when I was about like one, one and a half maybe, we ended up move we ended up moving to a spec house that we built. And I'm yeah, as I said, maybe like one, one and a half, maybe two at the latest. I have no idea. I don't think it was two, because we moved when I was three, so I think we spent more time there. Anyway. Um we were going to the we were going to put cable into our house, and we did actually put cable into our house, except for this one room, where I walked in once, and I remember getting really freaked out, because I think there were two windows on the far wall that would let light in, so this light would shine from these windows onto this wall, so it would look almost like two eyes, and the eyes didn't look happy down there. But we couldn't get cable in, and that room has room freaked me out when I was younger. And when I was three, I actually stopped going into that room because of how freaked out I was. Um, what else? Oh, my our my mother tells me that this happened, but I I I don't disagree with her, but I have no recollection of it. That she was trying to put me into bed one day. She was reading me a story. And. Uh, she just looks out. And I'm looking at this wall. And I'm smiling. And she said. What are you smiling about? And I said. The grandfather in the wall. She said. What grandfather in the wall? I said. You can't see him. He's right there. See? I said. He, he's also down there, too. I pointed at the room, which didn't have cable, because they couldn't put it in, because the, because the outlet for the cable would be in the wall with the grandfather. So my mother was like, huh, that's strange, and all that stuff. And she's, she hypothesized that maybe it was like an old trail of tears, like an old Indian burial ground. And... I was talking to my mom, and I'm like, eh, that doesn't seem like a stupid statement, but I don't know. I don't. I didn't buy it. And so, I, but I ended up doing a map for my honors professor's mother, who is currently the head of the Native Studies, like a Native Studies group. And she's ha they're having a meeting, that group, down in Newport Beach in, like, two weeks. And she's writing an article, and I had to make a map of it. And so I'll show you the map right now. Well, not now. It's going to be the thumbnail. Let's make it the thumbnail. And so, you know, that's nothing. That's how my life goes. I make maps. But... Uh, I was looking at the map, and I'm going with, I've never heard of this tribe. What happened to them? And then that tribe ended up moving from where it was, which is around, like, where my house was, up to Oklahoma in a forced migration, which you guys might know is, like, the Trail of Tears. It was basically that. So, yeah. There we go. And you guys are going with, these two stories don't make any sense. There's nothing to connect them. Stay tuned for tomorrow. That's all I'm going to say. Stay tuned for tomorrow. See ya.